Diabetic retinopathy remains the most important preventable cause of blindness in the working age population in India. Despite an increased awareness about the need for metabolic control and an increased availability of laser photocoagulation in various parts of the country, at least 4 to 5 percentage of eyes still develop complications that need surgical intervention. Although the techniques and technology of pass planar vitrectomy have evolved considerably over the years, the basic goal of removing vitreous to relieve traction on the retina and clear media opacities remain the same. The main indications for which pass planar vitrectomy is performed for diabetic retinopathy are non-clearing vitreous hemorrhage, tractional retinal detachment and combined mechanism tractional and regmatogenous retinal detachment. Non-clearing vitreous hemorrhage is one of the most common indications for pass planar vitrectomy. This patient is a chronic diabetic with a large subhyaloid hemorrhage. He has a subtotal posterior vitreous detachment attached to a dense fibrovascular proliferation arising from the optic disc. After performing an anterior vitrectomy, the posterior vitreous detachment cone is opened in a small area nasal to the disc and using suction, the altered subhyaloid blood is removed. The PVD cone is truncated from the edges of the fibrovascular proliferation. The fibrovascular proliferation is also trimmed down to a small stump. Endolaser panretinal photocoagulation is performed, thus ensuring stabilization of the retinopathy process. Membrane surgery, which is a major component of a complicated diabetic vitrectomy, can be effectively performed by various techniques such as segmentation, delamination, end block excision or by viscodissection. A wide array of instruments in 20, 23 and 25 gauges are available for membrane surgery. This video clipping demonstrates membrane surgery using the 23 gauge cutter as a multitask tool. Preoperative use of Avastin less than one week prior to the planned surgical procedure ensures reduction in vascularity and hence lesser bleeding intraoperatively. This chronic diabetic patient has a dense condensed posterior hyaloid phase adherent at multiple vascular epicenters to the retina and a tabletop tractional retinal detachment. Preoperative B scan ultrasonogram helps us in identifying areas of separation of the posterior hyaloid phase from the retina. In this patient, such an area nasal to the optic disc is chosen for cutter segmentation. A pre existing tear enlarges during separation of the posterior hyaloid phase by blunt dissection using a spatula. Care is taken to relieve all traction around the tear and achieving hemostasis. The peripheral condensed posterior hyaloid phase is excised and the retina is flattened mechanically by injection of perfluorocarbon liquid. Adequate pan-retinal laser photocoagulation and laser retinopexy followed by silicon oil tamponade completes this case achieving all the predetermined goals of diabetic vitrectomy. Membrane surgery can also be performed by bimanual dissection. In this case of an eye with advanced diabetic eye disease and extensive combined mechanism retinal detachment, a mixed port hybrid vitrectomy technique with 23 gauge and 20 gauge is used to perform a bimanual procedure. Endo illumination is provided by the Eckhart's self retaining twin chandelier system. The choice of gauge depends on the complexity of the case. A simple vitreous hemorrhage or a patient who requires only minimal membrane surgery can be well managed by 23 gauge. However, complex cases require a larger active port and hence hybrid port system is useful. Combined mechanism tractional and regmatogenous retinal detachment necessitates urgent vitreous surgery to reattach the retina. This patient has an acute onset combined mechanism retinal detachment. You can make out a continuous ring of regressed fibrovascular proliferation midway between the equator and the posterior pole 
which can be segmented and removed to relieve the traction. Note the Schlieren of subretinal fluid through the opened retinal tear when all residual traction is relieved. The traction nasal to the disc is also relieved. Perfluorocarbon liquid injection is performed to mechanically flatten the retina. It is absolutely essential to ensure adequate retinopexy around the tear in addition to performing pan-retinal photocoagulation. The perfluorocarbon liquid in the vitreous cavity is exchanged for silicon oil thereby achieving a stable attached retina. Stabilization of the retinopathy process is one of the main goals of surgery. This can be achieved by doing an endolaser photocoagulation or using the laser indirect ophthalmoscopic delivery system. This patient has an organized vitreous hemorrhage and preoperative evidence of a temporal retinal detachment on ultrasonogram. After a core vitrectomy and truncation of the cone, the tractional elements are relieved and excised. The retina flattens well under perfluorocarbon liquid injection. The responsible tear is at the extreme periphery and adequate retinopexy is achieved in this patient by using transconjunctival cryo. Pass plana vitrectomy also ensures resolution of recalcitrant diabetic macular edema in patients with thick, taut posterior hyaloid face or evidence of vitreomacular traction. This video clipping demonstrates internal limiting membrane peeling in a patient with recalcitrant gross diabetic macular edema. Intocyanin green is used to stain the internal limiting membrane. A tear in the internal limiting membrane is created by scraping on the retinal surface using a blunt spatula. Extension of the tear is achieved by gently stroking on the torn internal limiting membrane in a circular manner by a technique called macularexis. When adequate area of the internal limiting membrane has been loosened, a 23 gauge forceps is used to complete the tear and peel the internal limiting membrane. Deroofing of the internal limiting membrane in this situation ensures migration of extracellular fluid as well as improved oxygenation of the retina. Vitreomacular traction is another indication for pass plana vitrectomy. In this diabetic patient with lasered retinopathy, failure of clinically significant macular edema to resolve was attributed to vitreomacular traction identified on optical coherence tomography examination. Delineation of the posterior hyaloid phase is done by intraoperative utilization of preservative-free triamcinolone acetonide. Posterior vitreous detachment is induced by the suction of a 23-gauge cutter and the loose posterior hyaloid phase excised. The internal limiting membrane has triamcinolone acetonide crystals adherent to it and an internal limiting membrane peeling is performed. Postoperatively, the resolution of clinically significant macular edema and the functional results were gratifying. The surgical preparation of a patient with complications of proliferative diabetic retinopathy is complex. The presence of advanced diabetic retinopathy may be indicative of presence of significant systemic microvascular and macrovascular disease. A thorough preoperative workup and adequate counselling is absolutely vital in these compromised patients. It is our duty to create an honest and realistic assessment of the expected surgical results.